Da, 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 da. So today, what we're going to be doing is uh, going to do some AVM uh, lockout hubs, locking hubs, freewheeling hubs, and all the other languages that are underneath there. So they're made in Brazil, and here is the part number here. It's for uh, Land Rover Series 1, 2, 3, A, all the 10 spline. 405 manual locking hubs. So let's take a look, see what we got inside. Open it up. Got some warranty information. And it's not in English, so I don't, oh, there we go. They're Torx keys, they're talking about the Torx keys on the end or whatever. Okay, so we got some warranty information here. Then the instructions, which should be pretty simple. Just kind of take off your old hub, uh, take the hubs apart, uh, the front cover here, uh, put the new covers back on. You Actually, this kit here, which is interesting, it's 405, this kit that we're doing, and we reuse the axle nut, the, the nut that goes on the end of your axle. But kit 406, or is it 406, which is a, has a special nut in the kit, so... 406, which I think is for another Land Rover. I don't know if it's for a Defender or whatever, but I think it's the 24 spline. Don't quote me on that. But uh, you reuse, you have a special nut for those ones, but for the 10 spline, we're reusing our own nut that we have. So then there's special, they have special keys in there. We'll take a look at that. And then you torque down your, your nuts around here. So it should be pretty simple. We'll go through it all on the truck. Okay, so it comes with Two new gaskets, which they're kind of waxy, waxy gaskets instead of just regular plain old paper gaskets. Got those. Then in the bag here, it looks like we got axle nut seals. Not axle. The axle nut seals. Yeah, they go under behind the axle. Then we have a special, we'll take a look at these here in a second. Then here's the actual wheel hubs. So we got four wheel two and four by four right there on them and you can see inside there they're 10 spline if you could see that so they're 10 spline pretty simple they got a star wrench here which we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to go dig one up or whatever so you know you go your four and then you got your two two and four just like that so there's one here's the other one Let's see what we got in this bag here, because it looks like there's a special clip. All right. So let's open up this bag and let's take a look, see, see what we got in there. Gonna use the instructions so I don't get gook all over on everything. Okay, so we got our, our extra Torx to fill in, do all these ones. And here's the special um, cotter, oh, sorry, the special cotter key that goes into the end of the nut. Instead of reusing your cotter key, we're going to be using one of these that are special. And then our axle seals, which ours isn't very old because I already just redid all the axles. So we'll put this over here. It says for, to start it, we're going to be taking off the cover. So we have a, a Torx, which is a, T15, they take out the cup, take off the cover here. Let's take this off. As you can see, it's cold in the garage now. Now we're winter time here in Pennsylvania. Okay, take off the cover. There's another seal underneath there. There's the actual locking mechanism right here, all inside here. There's our seal. We'll put that right back onto there. And this part here is actually your freewheeling bearing in there to make sure that let your axle slide around in there. And this axle will be going in here. Actually, see inside here it actually has a part number 405, so you can make sure you got the right one if you ever take them off if you don't have any of the information. But that there has little crevices down here made in brazil made in brazil it says so it looks pretty simple not much to it 
So that's pretty cool. So that's that's pretty much your whole hub right there to make it run smooth right there, just like that. So, all right, so we got this apart. I know we have to take both of them apart, which is just a turn of this couple screws here. So let's go over to the truck and we'll start working on getting the, the axle caps off and everything like that. All right, we're gonna do a little test spin here. This is before with cold fluid. It's 30 degrees out Fahrenheit, about zero degrees celsius so you can see it doesn't spin much so i jacked the wheel up a little bit and put it on a block so it'd be up in the air so maybe the fluid won't pour out of it whenever i'm taking it apart i'm gonna pop the cap off here goo coming out already gonna need a bigger socket so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the cotter pin off because we're not gonna need that anymore also helps if you get all the right tools in the first time you come out to the driveway which I'm not very good at doing. Oh, holy. You guys have a terrible time with cotter pins. Okay, so, five eighths to take the, oh wait, you know what? You gotta take the axle nut off first. that up that's not actually on there too tight so it should come off pretty easy you can already tell this is going to be a gooey job Now we take the now we can take these ones off the, the flange bolts. Alright, so the next step we're going to be doing is popping the flange off. And I like to pry out around the edges and kind of pull it out instead of using a hammer and a chisel or anything. So it takes a little finessing, but it'll pop off after a while. Got the plate off, dry flange. Not too much goo coming out, but we got some. So I went inside and got the, the freewheeling hubs, and I'm just gonna scrape off the old gasket here with a razor blade scraper. I uh, will speed up the film for this one. So next, gonna take a, a little lacquer thinner 
and uh, clean up the surfaces for the gasket. For some reason, I always need to use lacquer thinner. I, it must be OCD or something. I, I will not admit that I have. <laughs> so I'm going to clean this up and let's see what we do next. So next we're going to be taking the freewheeling hub uh, flange mount, putting uh, the new gasket that came in the kit with it, but uh, oh, I see something's going to happen here. Uh, looks like I forgot to take the axle seal off the end, a little foamy piece, so make sure you take that off. There is a new one in the kit, so we don't have to worry about that. So I would strongly suggest this gasket, that the new gasket in the kit that's putting on with the flange, that you put sealant on it. Because after a while, mine start leaking, like most Land Rover things do. They usually leak, but the axle with a little bit of just a little gasket sealant or sticky tack on there would help it just to keep the goo inside. And I think that is the technical term, the goo. <laughs> Now that we have the, the flange kind of snugged up, well now we're going to snug it the whole way in and kind of seat the flange into the axle by doing a little X pattern. Just to keep it so it goes in there straight and you're not cranking it down sideways or anything like that. So just do it a little bit at a time going around. Now the flange is snug down, give it a little thumbs up and make sure you wipe it off again just for the heck of it. So the next thing is you take your axle seal, the foam one that came in the kit, and you kind of push it in there and try to line it up in there straight and flat. Alrighty, so now we have the seal in there flush, and that sure did take a while. Next thing is we'll grab the washer, give it a wipe down there, and then put that on. And then put our axle nut on. And this was, it's kind of weird, like now that we have a freewheel and hub, it spins. So I tried to torque it down the best that I could with the wrench, kind of give it a little impact, kind of turns with it whenever I put it on. So I used the wrench, but then it starts turning. So if anybody has any tricks, please put them down in the comments below on how to keep that from spinning. Because even though I had it in four wheel drive, it still didn't want to not spin since it's a freewheel and hub. So 
Alrighty, so we're going to snug that up as tight as we can. Okay, so we pull out the cotter pin, the special cotter pin that came with the kit. Here's a closer look at it. It's a bit of an odd one. I wasn't 100% sure how to put it in, and we'll take a closer look at it later after I get it in. But uh, I'm going to tap it in with a hammer here and try to get the, the two little arms to go around the threaded piece on the end to try to hold the cotter pin in place so it doesn't pop back out. It's, it's kind of difficult to get in there. It's kind of difficult to get the cotter pin in there. The, the little legs that go around the end of the axle, the threaded part, and we'll take a little closer look here. The next part is the cap that goes over top of the end. It actually has the locking, the four-wheel drive, and two-wheel drive settings on it. So there's also a gasket that goes inside there when you put the cap on. And I looked, and while I'm looking around in there now, I'm looking to see if there's a special way it goes on. And it didn't really have any specific way to go on, so I just start lining up the holes and putting in uh, T-screws onto the end of it. And uh, the instructions said just hand tighten these T-bolts on, so don't over tighten them with a wrench or anything like that. Just snug them up with the screwdriver like a normal small screw. So we got all the screws snug down by hand and everything seems to be working smooth. The four wheel drive, the two wheel drive and all the bolts and the whole assemblies on there are pretty snug. So I think we're pretty much done with this side. Give it an old thumbs up. We're good to go. All right, so now we have the side done. Let's uh, raise it up in the air and give it a test spin and see how much easier the wheel spins from before at the beginning of the video until now. It goes pretty smooth. It definitely turns with not much effort, so you can definitely tell a difference from, uh, 
freewheel and hubs than not having freewheel and hubs. If it's good or bad, I don't know. But uh, let's hear your comments down below. I definitely know you're supposed to click them on four wheel drive every once in a while to keep the the Railco, I think it's the Railco bushings, uh, lubed up in the front and your U joints and things like that. So it's good for a temporary drive around, but you definitely want to swap them over to the four wheel drive to keep the insides lubed up after a while. So I'm pretty happy with the end result. So I'm going to lower on down and we'll start working on the other side. So they're all installed. I did a test on two wheel drive and four wheel drive and it worked through the mud over by, by the other side of my house or whatever. So I noticed a little bit of a difference, but not much on power wise. That little diesel, she's trying as hard as she can to push this thing. And I don't think it, it really gained too much, but maybe just a smidge or whatever. So I think it'll be good in the long run whenever we get out on the highway and getting some miles on her and try to get that engine broken in. But in other words, it's installed, they're installed and they're working good and they work, they're really easy to change or whatever. So it comes with everything you need. So good luck with yours. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, stay awesome. And I'll catch you on the next one.